In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. This past week, I went up to North Carolina with my son, Max, and Connor Scheider, who's in the youth group. One of the things that we did was to visit uh, an after-school program for Latina children. The program is run by a woman who does it all for free, an Episcopalian, I'm so proud. <laughs> the program is located in a trailer park. It's in a valley between the mountains, and the day we were there, the rain was pouring down and everything was flooding. There were over 20 children piled into this little trailer. It was getting hot. Max and Connor, being good Boy Scouts, put up a tent so that the kids could go outside. After the tent was up, a little boy about this tall, beautiful, thick, dark hair and dark skin, looked at Max, looked up at Max, who's now almost six feet, and said, Why are you here? Max said, I wanted to meet you. I wanted to see you. Did someone pay you? <laughs> no, Max said, nobody's paying me. I just, I wanted to come and spend some time with you. The little boy said something then that broke my heart. He said, no one wants to come and spend time with us. You must have a really sad life. <laughs> no one wants to come and spend time with us. You must have a really sad life. We all want to belong somewhere, to feel wanted, needed, important. I remember when I was in high school, both freshman and sophomore years, I had to ride the school bus. And every morning with my big backpack on, I'd get up on the school bus and I had to pass by the two most popular girls in the grade, Pam and Jen. They always had their hair perfectly done. They were dating senior football players in their sophomore year. And I remember always trudging by them, thinking to myself, I wish I were one of them. I wish I were part of that group, the perfect people that look beautiful and seem happy and have it all together. But I wasn't, I was an artistic nerd. And I didn't even think I could try to belong to that group. The funny thing is, though, when you and I feel like we don't belong, that's when we actually are getting closer to Jesus. Because guess what? He didn't feel like he belonged either. He was really like a fish out of water. In the gospel for today, Jesus walks through a village of Samaritans. The Samaritans were Jews, but they didn't like Jerusalem. They didn't think Jerusalem was really where God's house should be. So when they found out that Jesus was heading towards Jerusalem, they just rejected him. They didn't want him to stay there. Now disciples, I love the disciples, they, they're like bodyguards, they're bumblers. They say, why don't we just curse the whole village and let God send down fire on them? And Jesus says, stop. Why don't we just beat them up, you know? 
then Jesus says something so vulnerable, kind of like that little boy. He says, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. In other words, I have no home. There's nowhere that I belong. I don't have a resting place, a, a safe place, a place where I can just stay. And he was right. Jesus was always moving. And he was always ministering. He never just got to hang out and feel like he belonged. Someone comes up to Jesus and says, and Jesus says, come with me. And the man says, I just, I want to, but let me go bury my father. That sounds like a reasonable request, right? I mean, what is he supposed to do? Let the body decay? But Jesus says, you need to come right now. Let the dead bury the dead. I don't know how the dead would do that, do you? Another person, Jesus says, come with me, and that person says, let me just say goodbye to my family. Again, a very reasonable request. And Jesus says, no one who puts their hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. I've always struggled with this. You mean it's not even okay to say goodbye? I mean, I know Jesus wasn't into huge family gatherings and all that, but couldn't the guy just say sayonara? You know, in Palestine to this day, farming is very difficult. The soil is dry most of the year. And the rains tend to come between October and November. So it would generally be early to mid-November when the soil was soft enough from the rain that you could plow. And in Jesus' time, they didn't have the fancy tractors that we have today and all the equipment. What they had was two beasts, donkeys probably, maybe somebody stronger like cattle, they would put two of these beasts in what was called a yoke. It was a wooden piece of material with holes for the heads to go through. And then they would, they would push and whip the oxen or the donkeys to pull. They were attached to this long piece of wood that came down and was like a knife at the bottom. And it would dig into the soil about four or five inches deep, creating this crevice where then the seeds could drop. Well, sure enough, if your hands are to the plow, and if you're trying to get those oxen or donkeys to move, you have to navigate those animals. And you have to look just a little bit ahead, not too far ahead, but you certainly can't turn back. If you turned back, it would be like going like this. And guess where the animals would go? off on a tangent. You needed to keep your furrows straight for the seeds to be plowed in a way that could then be harvested. So you couldn't look back or you would get off course. Now, I think what Jesus was trying to tell us is that we all want to belong and we want our lives to work out just the way we think they should. So we tend to think about, I call them the what ifs. What if I had tried to fit in with the popular girls? What if I had applied for that job and not that job? What if I had married that guy instead of that guy? What if? And we tend to look back and if doing that, we can get off course. I was talking to a woman a few nights ago 
who has a PhD in counseling. And she told me something that I had never known before. I, it must be a new form of treatment. When someone is suffering from an anxiety attack or from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and when they're full of fear and in crisis, the counselor doesn't comfort them by telling them that everything's okay or that everyone really loves them or anything like that. The best practice today, if someone is engulfed in fear, is to ask them to be present in the moment. And this is how the counselor does it. They will say to the person, look around the room and tell me what objects are in the room. And then they'll use another sense. What do you smell right now? And then another sense. What do you hear right now? And in this way, the counselor brings the person out of all the what-ifs and how horrible everything is and the fear and the not feeling like they belong anywhere to being present in the moment. And in doing that, the person is often calmed. There's a wonderful ethicist and scholar who calls Christians resident aliens because we don't belong. We belong with Christ in heaven. And we look at our lives with a different perspective, which makes it somehow hard sometimes to feel at home here. But there is one place where you do belong and where Jesus belonged. And that is in the present moment. Do you remember how I've said before, God's name is I am. It's not I will be or I was, right? So God can be found in the present moment. And when we are truly present, looking just ahead, not too far, but right in front of us, when we are present with what we are doing and what God is asking of us, in that moment, heaven touches the earth and we're present with God. And we do belong. But not back there and not thinking about the way we wish things would be but the way things are right now. Even if it's painful or beautiful or joyful or all of the above. This is where God is. Moving forward and being awake Now at the after school program, after we put up this tent, and that same little boy who thought Max must have a sad life was not behaving well inside the trailer, so we brought him outside, and we decided we were gonna make a four square game. Has anyone ever played four square? We brought some boards from Home Depot and we made this four square, and we got the boy and, and four other kids to start playing. The rain kept on pouring down the tent, and they were started laughing and hollering, and one of them had to be the trash, the other the king and the queen and the prince, and they, ro they rotated around. I don't understand it at all. But they were laughing, and they were right there, and for a moment I think that boy felt like he belonged. That's my prayer, that in the present, he was with us. Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. 
And neither do we, not permanently.